So I went back in and edited the material to be 6061 aluminum and reran the study and our displacement went up to a millimeter and a half or about 60 thousandths. Deformation, factor of safety goes quite a bit down. Let's see if uh, that is the, the one time. So if we go back to three and if we're at 0.5, anything below one, oh, it has to be one. <laughs> so we're not even at one time factor of safety and we have uh, those um, those pieces. So that in aluminum, this might need to be a, a solid beam. So we're going to have um, have that ability to make uh, decisions about our uh, about our geometry. So we'll save that. Uh, I'm not going to generate the um, uh, the report or put this out the drawings for this uh, this item, but uh, those are available if you need to present uh, another. Uh, Options. So if I go back and I hide those, go save, and then in our drawing we ran into quite a few of the uh, the limit dimensions, and in my um, cleanup pass I uh, decided to go back to the metric on the uh, the top. Uh, since um, when we look at the um, H7G6 uh, numbers, those will uh, come into uh, come into play. Uh, so let's take um, you know, as we go through this. I want to um, see that the OD is a little bit bigger and the ID is a little bit a um, little bit smaller. So. I say that right. ID is a little bit bigger, 10 to 10 to, and the um, uh, OD is a little bit. Um, now it's going to still be a press fit, and that one's going to be a clearance fit. So I have to think through those process. And let's see, we're at um, three decimal places on the millimeters. And that one did not um, did not update. So so we have three decimal places there. The bottom one at in inches. That is not updating. Hmm. Wonder what. Um, what happened with it? All right, so 10.2 to the 10 millimeter. The next would be the uh, the pins with the different is a little bit smaller, and uh, then we would calculate the worst case by taking the 9985 and going to the 10 millimeters and saying we would have the 0.015 of, of clearance. So where those numbers come from, if we go to um, the machinery's handbook, or this is the um, Mark Standard Handbook for Mechanical Engineers, and we look for the descriptions, it gives us a reference to the ANSI or the ASME B4.1 and gives us some basic definitions, the allowance, being a minimum clearance for positive, maximum interference for negative, and we do have some tools to calculate clearances and interferences. Uh, tolerance is the total permissible variation, and the limits of size is what we've been applying, maximum mins. Uh, the clearance fit limits uh, that a clearance always results when the parts are assembled, and then an interference fit we want it to have a, uh, a press or a um, an interference fit. Transition can go either way. That um, we either have a clearance or interference on the um, the assembly, and the basic size is where we're starting from. So in the case of our uh, the OD of our bushing, the 16 millimeters. Uh, unilateral tolerance in case variation is permitted in one direction. So the fits are running and sliding fits. I don't know how well the uh, the bookmark uh, highlight is uh, going to show up, but 
each each one then has a class that when we go to the chart we're going to be able to uh, define what those um, uh, close running, precision running, free running, um, basically that it's able to move the locational um, and let's see where did that uh, that jump over to um, so uh, locational freely assembled or disassembled uh, again has several subclasses Okay, there it went. And then the uh, the transition fits uh, application where accuracy of location is important, uh, but a small amount of clearance or interference is permissible. Uh, locational is um, uh, with the uh, the rigidity, and then the force or the uh, the shrink fits uh, all the way up to uh, we're just going to have to put a lot of uh, load on it to uh, to make it work. So in the, uh, the tolerance, when you're looking at the inch series, uh, pretty much you're putting the three decimals on this. And it's based on the range of the, uh, the shaft that you're um, dealing with. Let's see, limits. And so we'll go through the, uh, the groups. And then uh, depending on, I kind of look at it as if, um, I'm going to have a purchase part. I'm going to make it the uh, the higher priority. So if I'm buying shaft, uh, the 10 millimeter shaft, and it comes in with its own tolerance, then I'm going to uh, make bushings on that. If I'm buying the bushings and the shaft, then I'm kind of at the uh, tolerant zones of the vendor that is providing those. So we can set a... Um, uh, the, the whole basis system of fits where the minimum hole size is basic and then the shaft basis is um, is where the uh, the shaft size is basic and then the fundal fundamental deviation is um, let's see capital letters refer to the hole and lowercase letters to the uh, to the shaft on the shaft basis and um, and then the uh, the fundal uh, whole basis system is H. Let's see if I read that right. And then the um, shaft basis is the lowercase uh, H. So we go through and then we look at the descriptions. When I see these, I pretty much have to go to the chart and uh, identify what I'm looking at, a sliding fit. So we were talking about the H7G6 callout. And uh, that was the uh, the whole basis, and the G7H6 then would um, be the sliding fit if it was the shaft basis. So when we come down to the charts, we're going to look at all of uh, all of our geometry. So the basic size, we go to 16 millimeter. We need to find our H7G6, and then they're showing 16. 0.018 to 16 and then the 15994 to 983 so we're we're in that same range it depends on uh, where the uh, the chart um, uh, would come to so this one being a uh, press fit I should use the 10 millimeter this one being a press fit then uh, we would want it to have um, uh, have that greater size. So if we went back the other way, the uh, 10.015 to 9986. So that is our uh, our numbers that were generated, and the fit uh, for the uh, the max is 0 .0, call it 0 .03 millimeters all the way to 0 .005 on the um, on the stack up. So. When we go through the uh, the stack ups, the uh, the real issue here becomes uh, unless I'm in a company that has its own uh, Swiss uh, screw machines that can make uh, 16 millimeter bushings and it can make them really fast, uh, I'm not going to uh, be able to uh, meet the um, uh, the production and the cost for uh, something like a um, 
uh, a bearing or bushing or even the, the shaft material at that point. Buying it in length and cutting it off is one thing. And that's a conversation with the manufacturing engineer, the mechanical engineer making decisions on stock sizes and the, um, the items that we would need to uh, perform this, um, this function. So if we needed a custom size, then uh, we could certainly have it made. But if we can buy something off the shelf, it's always going to be cheaper. So uh, shaft diameter will be 10 millimeters. And so for the um, uh, ID, they're showing a 16 millimeter with a um, shaft diameter of 10. And let's make sure I'm reading this right. For the housing ID, well, you can always go in and double check. So 16.03, 10 millimeters and uh, 10 millimeters on length. Well, our housing is uh, 18 millimeters, so we could possibly stack up two of those. Wouldn't really want to, but um, it, is, uh, it is doable. Or we could pick a, uh, a different um, uh, bushing to and shaft combination that would give us uh, that desired result. So if we come down to this product detail, we go up to 16, and that would be a little over one and a half the, the diameter of the shaft. So it would have uh, more, uh, more load or, or better uh, loading on that one. And we're at 490 pounds versus 310 pounds. So I don't think weight's the issue here so much as we're still maxed out at 120. So an oil embedded sleeve bearing uh, as it, starts and the shaft starts to uh, to turn and create friction it's going to pull some of that oil uh, that is um, in the um, in the um, the bronze out and create a, a lubrication sheen so if we went up to a 20 millimeter then we would have a little bit sticking out I wouldn't really want to cut these down so somewhere between that 16 and 20 millimeter uh, we could make the uh, the choice of how we're going to press those in or leave a little clearance in our 18 millimeter uh, width. So uh, price difference from 248 to 274, and this is just going from a catalog. If we went uh, to a manufacturer or a higher volume, then certainly those uh, those prices could um, could come down. Uh, higher RPM than 120, then we're going to go over to uh, a permanently lubricated ball bearing and we're going to have to decide do we want the open face and actually let's see if that's uh, showing up over here not sure how many I clicked so we have uh, plenty of choices here uh, also the, um, the the bushing uh, side uh, we had the um, the possibility of the flange if it had uh, like an end in thrust um, as well as the uh, the radial uh, loading so uh, the ball bearings can be um, uh, open or sealed and then the uh, the precision uh, light duty we got quite a few if we were uh, taking on um, the uh, the load in the radial we would want to look at a, a thrust bearing so really all of the uh, the different um, uh, types of uh, uh, that we would be uh, that we could uh, choose from and go through that process. So when we um, pick these, we're still looking for the 10 millimeter shaft diameter and width of 8 millimeters. So we'd have to decide do we want to put two of those in line or have some other method of supporting it. The other thing that we haven't discussed is uh, how we're going to uh, to drive this on our design for manufacture is somewhere we have to be able to transmit power into the system and be able to create um, uh, the movement that is going to translate from rotational to more of an arc move, um, you know, closer to uh, to linear movement. So at 26 millimeters, we don't really, we haven't really left enough in the uh, the housing to uh, to go to one of these bearings. Um, it, it would be uh, would be close. 
And then if, um, let's just um, go back and we'll search uh, for a, um, oops, if I can spell, I'm looking for the NEMA, probably the NEMA 23, maybe a, uh, well, let's just look in the NEMA motors. We don't really need to control position. So we'd have to decide if we want a DC motor, um, the uh, an AC motor, speed controls, uh, those types of uh, things. So if I was looking at a speed control, and what would the uh, the shaft diameter be? So let's see, half inch. So we're already uh, bigger than the uh, the geometry that we picked. Um, stepper motor. And uh, if we needed to look at continuous operating torque in inch ounces, well, now we're back to doing the analysis on how much it's going to take to turn, what's the load on the other end. Uh, but just looking at, uh, at these, let's see, a, a quarter inch shaft uh, NEMA 23 is pretty, uh, pretty standard, 600 RPM, 900 RPM, or 2250. Uh, so we're quite a bit of ways from the uh, the 100 and that's going to drive again some of our decision making so we need to know the power requirement uh, are, are we going to adjust this from an AC to a DC power supply and then uh, be able to mount this so let's just say that we're going to um, speed control this uh, continuing operating torque at 17 inch ounces and uh, the drivers and controllers. All right, so seven, five, and um, 90. Then we're, you know, we're about $1,200 to uh, just kind of put this kit together. And if I was to, uh, to download this, we could uh, bring this, and then uh, we notice the, uh, the SolidWorks add-in that um, uh, will um, bring this uh, model directly into uh, to SOLIDWORKS. So I haven't looked into that just yet, but we'll, um, we'll let that download. And then uh, as we go through the process, we'll be able to uh, make some, uh, some more and better decisions on the design.